Hi, welcome to a new week of Climbing Daily. Today we've got the second part of our series where we go to DMM and find out how the kit you use goes from the furnace to your harness. Last time we looked at how the guys at DMM came up with the concept and design for the equipment that they manufacture. On this show we're going to take it to the next stage and look at the manufacturing process of a carabiner inside their metal works. So Fred, this is the very start of the process. These arrive to you in the factory just as aluminium rods, is that right? Absolutely, they're very special rods from the mill. And in layman's terms, what aluminium is this? This, this is 7075 aircraft alloy, so it's 7000 series aluminium. It's exactly the stuff they'd use to make the wings of a 747. So we've gone for the amount of aluminium rods and then they then go into this cropping machine. We, we'll stack, may, may even be a hundred bars in here and this will feed them through and crop them to length. So it, it's been cut to length, what's this machine doing here? Okay, this is what we would call a bowing machine. So what this is doing, it comes in, clamps the part in the correct position and then it will hydraulically bend the bar to shape. So there's great big cylinders that move those arms around. We're just running this by hand just to show you. Normally this would all be completely automatically fed. Well, we're only really on the second or the third phase of the manufacturing process. These aluminium bars were delivered at three metres long. They were chopped down to size goes into the press and already we have something that looks like a carabiner. The next stage is for the metal to be hot forged. The metal enters the press at 450 degrees with around 250 tonnes of pressure applied to forge the metal. So these carabiners here have been raw forged. What's happened to them now? This is just setting up to heat treat them. So they're loaded in the furnace, they're all hanging on trees. And the idea of that is to minimize the distortion when they get quenched into water. And over there you can see a water tank bubbling away, ready to accept them. So these will go in, the lid of the furnace will close, and then they will go through a very gentle heat up hold at temperature for a specified time, and then they will be quenched. The next phase of operating on a press, where we cut all the excess material off, and then they'll come back into the heat treat department again right. for a second phase of heat treatment. So what does a heat treatment do? Basically, it's going to put all the grain structure in line and in the right condition. No carabiner would be strong enough without heat treatment. They'd just be like pulling chewing gum apart. Whereas this makes them deal with all the loads and forces that are applied to them. So Fred, this now looks like a carabiner with a kind of like a rind of bacon, the extra bit. What stage are we at now? What we call the flash taken off. That's the rind. That's the, That's the rind on the, ex the excess. So this is what's known as clipping, before and after. So this is like a cake cutter working and it's pushing the form through a die. Right Fred, the carabiners have been heat treated. We've had the two halves of that. They've had most of the excess metal removed so they look, they look pretty, like carabiners, close, yeah. pretty close. What's the next stage? We're okay. going to talk about it out here, it's very yeah. loud. It's the barreling department. Most of the product we manufacture will run through here to have all the sharp edges smoothed down. It slightly de-stresses the component, gets them really, really close to the end. So here's a component. I can tell this hasn't been in the barreling very, very long because I can still see the, the edge from the clipping tool. So what is the process? So they're in a vibrating bowl with thousands of these cones. Inside the plastic, you can't really see it, but it's very, very fine ceramic. And what the vibrating is doing, it's pretty similar to me standing there and rubbing this 12 to 18 hours. So basically now it goes from looking like a carabiner to feeling like one. Absolutely. So Fred, 
These have been smoothed by the ceramics for yep. 14 odd hours yep. and they've been brought into machining. And what is machining in terms of carabiners? Well, in this instance, what we're doing is just putting the two holes in for a wire gate. They're a predetermined position and a predetermined size. Obviously, you want all of them to be the same so all the carabiners work exactly the same. Next, the raw components of the carabiner are statically tested to see if they're strong enough. And once the results have been verified, they're sent out of house for anodizing. Right, so now we can have a look, I believe, at an anodized piece and a non anodized piece. Different carabiners, but obviously that doesn't matter. That's basically raw and it would have a natural anodic film on it, so it gives it some protection against, against the atmosphere. When you anodize something, it, it is actually in the material, it's not on the material like because paint I, would be. I made the mistake of suggesting to you it was like painting. It's not like painting, it's, it's actually in the grain okay. of the material. So Fred, these have been anodized, brought back to DMM. Now what? Okay, so this is the assembly department. This is where, in this instance, a carabiner is joined together with its gate mechanism. And the gate is assembled in here as well? The gate's assembled in here, done as a sub-assembly. And then, in this instance, it's a screw gate. So it's got a thimble, a circlip to stop the thimble coming off. And inside, there is a, a compression spring that works on a pusher. And that should come up and stop. There should still be play in the carabiner. It goes down and stops and allows the carabiner to open. Simple as that. So, Fred, we've got a manufactured carabiner that needs to be lasered. The lasering process is a method of permanently and indelibly marking any information you want. That can be a batch code, a standard, a part number, a logo, it could be anything. So you can trace the whole history of the carabiner from what is written on here? Absolutely. Thanks to everyone at DMM for their help with the project. Make sure you check back next week when we're going to have the third and final part of the series where we do my favourite bit, the testing. Last thing before we leave you, don't forget that if you sign up to become an EpicTV.com member, you'll get 10% off everything in the shop. Very generous. We'll see you tomorrow.